Uh, my fellowship was at the Children's Hospital in Aurora, Colorado. And I worked in the orthopedic department with Dr. Travis Hare, who's a pediatric orthopedic oncologist, and Patrick Carey, who is a, a Cornell alum and is a research assistant for the orthopedic department. My research project was understanding and evaluating the efficacy of using long leg radiographs to obtain prosthetic alignment for pediatric lower extremity amputees. So if you have malaligned prosthetics, especially if you're a child who are constantly getting new prosthetics um, approximately once every two years, you are putting a lot of wear on your joints and on your bones. So having a malaligned prosthetic can result in bone degeneration as well as a lot of discomfort and a lot of issues with walking and with your gait later on in life. So overall your quality of life is decreased by having a malaligned prosthetic. So um, at the Children's Hospital, they wanted to limit this and so they're trying to find the most efficient way possible to obtain neutral um, alignment. So what they started doing was using long leg, long leg radiographs to actually visualize the bones and be able to measure accurately whether your bones are in alignment with your prosthetic and whether you have the right length and um, angle. So what I did was I measured the radiographs. So I took the initial radiographs after traditional methods were used. So through observational gait analysis and a prosthetist physical exam. And I measured how far malaligned the prosthetics were. So I looked at distal displacement and mechanical axis, which is the angle from your femoral head through your center of your knee joint and from your femoral head to the center of your ankle joint and that distance between that angle, um, as well as the angle of deviation itself. Um, and I also looked at leg length discrepancy. And so I compared those radiographs with radiographs we took after adjustments were made based off the original radiographs. So I was just seeing how, um, how significantly we had improved alignment and whether exposing children to more um, x-rays is beneficial in terms of aligning prosthetics. So these were my results and I found that all um, variables like length discrepancy, mechanical axis deviation, and distal offset were all significantly improved using radiographic parameters. Um, so this is really great. This means that uh, Children's Hospital can keep doing this and more efficiently aligning lower extremity amputees with their prosthetics, as well as um, share this with other institutions and other children's hospitals and other um, orthopedic surgeons and prosthetists so that more children can make more use of their time and not have to go to the hospital as much if they're amputees and also have a better quality of life. So um, a lot of my fellowship was conducting um, literature search and learning about what is the best alignment and how alignment is usually obtained, as well as looking a lot about how um, childhood amputees are treated and how and what um, kind of amputations are happening and what kind of variables affect quality of life in terms of gait. And then I also created an abstract and e-poster for my results and um, submitted it to POSNA, the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America, and hopefully it will be um, presented through them and also in their uh, journal in the next year. Um, and then I also looked at future research. And so we want to see exactly what alignment is better for different levels of amputations as well as children who might have residual limb abnormalities where the traditional neutral alignment is not necessarily best. So I did a lot of research into um, the current literature on that subject, as well as looking at grant possibilities for funding. Um, and then I also did a lot of shadowing. I looked at, I got to watch a lot of really cool surgeries, such as rotation plasties and amputations, as well as um, shadow a lot of clinical experiences and morbidity and mortality conferences and other such interdisciplinary conferences between doctors, surgeons, and researchers. So I learned a lot about how to conduct clinical research. Um, at Cornell, I did a lot of lab-end research, but this really utilized 
my statistics skills for my t statistics class, as well as um, how to really apply current research with practices in medicine. Um, I got to work in a hospital setting with medical professionals and um, learn how to write and submit abstracts and grant proposals. So my fellowship was very impactful. Um, it really helped me learn how my coursework here can apply to my future work in medicine and in research. So I got to learn exactly how significant my statistics class here was and is. Um, also, research methodology and writing. And I got to really better my writing skills and my critical thinking skills. And professionally, it helped me learn how to create professional relationships and also how to work on publications. Um, and this has really impacted my future. It really narrowed what I want to do for a living, which is be in the health profession, as well as what kind of medicine I want to practice. Um, and it also gave me an opportunity to have a job after I graduate. Um, I made really great relationships at Children's Hospital, and I really enjoyed the research I did there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I do want to thank um, the fellowship program, as well as my site mentor, pa Patrick Carey, as well as Dr. Travis Hare, um, and my faculty sponsor, Craig.